Hi, this is JP from Another Lights Over Arkham. In this Hero Pack Focus, we are looking at the player cards that come in the Star Lord Hero Pack. So let's get started. First, we have Peter Quill. Peter Quill has a free recovery. Uh, he has the Outlaw trait set up. Search your deck and discard pile for a copy of the Element Gun. Upgrade and add it into your hand. Shuffle your deck. Smooth Talker. Action. Choose a card in your hand. Swap that card with the top card of your deck in once per round. Uh, Peter Quill has a hand size of 6 and 10 hit points. Okay, well, at least you will find your weapon. And one of your weapons at the start, there are two copies of the element gun in the deck. Uh, the smooth talker seems like a decent um, way to search your deck for better options. If you have a bad card, you just don't need uh, that turn. You can put it back onto the top of your deck and now you will draw it soon enough. Okay, uh, then let's look at the hero side. So the hero side is Star-Lord. Uh, Star-Lord has 2-4, two, 2 attack and 1 defense. Uh, guardian trait. Each ally you control gains the Guardian trait. Uh, then we have the what could go wrong ability. Interrupt when you play a card from your hand. Deal yourself 1 face down and count the card. Reduce the resource cost of that. Uh, reduce the resource cost to play that card by 3 limit once per round. Okay, well, uh, first off, this, it seems that the uh, Star Lord is a high risk, a high reward kind of character. So you want to play expensive allies and expensive stuff, reduce the cost, and uh, take a bit punishment from the encounter deck by doing so. But I think uh, Star, Star Lord should have some ways around this. This hindrance, but let's start looking at the signature cards next. First, we have the signature ally Nova Prime. Uh, Nova Prime is a 5 cost ally with 2 toward and 3 attack, that's quite a lot. Uh, aerial Nova Corpse and uh, 3 hit points. Response after you play Nova Prime uh, from your hand, defeat a non elite minion. And Nova Prime can be committed as a uh, wild resource. So you can mm, just get rid of a non elite minion by playing Nova Prime, that's really powerful. You could have a high health uh, minion in play that just goes away when you play this. So this seems like a powerful card. Uh, it's really costly, but because Star Lord can cheapen it by 3, I think that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, and then we have Daring Escape. Uh, there are three copies of this in the deck. Daring Escape is a zero cost event. Hero action, deal yourself one, face down and count the card. Ready your hero and draw one card. Okay, um, yeah, this uh, goes again to the high risk, high reward, uh, high risk, high reward playstyle of Star Lord, so you just get piles of encounter cards and uh, get uh, high rewards from doing so. So, uh, well, I need to test that card to see how good that is. I have no idea yet. Next we have a, a Gutsy Move, which is a two cost event. Uh, there are two copies of this in the deck. So Gutsy Move is a Thwart uh, traded event. Hero action Thwart remove two threat from a scheme. Remove two additional threat from that scheme for each face down and counter card in front of you. Okay, so uh, right away we see some synergies to taking extra uh, encounter cards. With this, you can uh, remove even more threat and it's cheap also. So you're taking a lot of punishment from the encounter deck but doing big moves while you're doing so. Uh, then we have uh, sliding shots. And there are uh, three copies of this in the deck. Sliding Shot is a three cost event. It's an attack traded event. Play only if you control an element gun. So you need to have your element gun in play. 
hero action, attack, deal 5 damage to an enemy, deal 2 additional damage to that enemy for each face down encounter card in front of you. And this can be committed as a physical resource. So, again, uh, the more you have encounter cards in front of you, the more that card does so uh, right in the theme of Skull Lord. Next we have a Bad Boy. Bad Boy is a 3 cost support, it's a vehicle. Hero interrupt when you would take any amount of damage from the villain attack. Discard this card, prevent all of that da damage. Change to Alter Ego form and draw two cards. Okay, uh, so I think there aren't that many supports that um, work in uh, hero mode. Well, there are, but uh, not that many, at least not the uh, hero-specific supports. Okay, well, this is an interesting one. So you are taking a lot of damage from an attack. You can just discard the bad boy and prevent all of that and change to alter ego form and go card. So that seems pretty powerful. Okay, well, uh, we'll need to see this in play to know more. Uh, next we have the element, element guns, so there are two of them. Element uh, gun is a uh, 3 cost upgrade uh, tech weapon, restricted, max 2 restricted cards per player, hero action, attack, exhaust element gun and spend 1 resource of any type, deal 3 damage to an enemy, this attack gains piercing and it can be committed as a uh, energy resource. So, uh, a decent card, nothing uh, really fancy in my opinion, but I think it's an okay uh, way to deal damage. So by, if you have two of these, you can uh, just exhaust them and discard cards that you don't need from hand and uh, deal damage and gain piercing so it even goes through uh, tough, which is really good actually. Okay, uh, next we have Jet Boots, it's a 2 cost upgrade, it's an item attack, Starlord gains the aerial trait, hero interrupt, and Starlord could take any amount of damage, exhaust Jet Boots, grant one of that damage for, for each face damage and counter guard in front of you. Okay, uh, so the more you take risks, the better the Jet Boots, uh, the better they get, and uh, also Jet Boots can be committed as a entire resource. Okay. Uh, next we have the leader of the guardians. It's a three cost upgrade title. Each guardian character you control gets plus one port. When you have this in play, all of your character uh, allies have a plus one port because um, Star Lord gives everybody the guardian trait. So this seems like a really good card. And lastly, from the signature cards, we have Star Lord's Helmet. It's a one cost upgrade uh, armor tech. While you are in hero form, you get plus one hand size for each face damage counter card in front of you, a maximum of three plus hand size. So, and it can be committed as an entire resource. So, the more you have face down and counter cards, the bigger your hand gets at the end of the hero phase, so you can have. A a really big hand and uh, make a really big turn next turn if you survive that long. Okay, really interesting. Then uh, Stalard comes with the leadership uh, rebuild deck. So let's look at the leaders cards. First, we have uh, Adam Warlock. Uh, Adam Warlock is three cost ally with one fourth and one attack, aerial mystic, and also, three hit points. Response: After Adam Warlock attacks or thwarts, discard one ran a card at random from your hand. It, if that card's printed resource has uh, physical, remove three threat from a scheme. Energy: Deal three damage from an identity. A mental: Deal three damage to an enemy. Or while choose one of those, uh, one of the above. Okay. Well. Uh, you could basically just uh, play all of your cards except one from your hand 
and then use Adam Warlock and know what the effect will be. So this is a really, really interesting, feels like a really good card. Uh, Adam Warlock can also be committed as a physical resource, so really looking forward to playing this. Next we have uh, Beta Ray Bill. Uh, Beta Ray Bill is a 5 cost ally with 1 4 and 3 attack. Ascord traded for health response after Beta Ray Bill attacks and the defeats minion remove 2 threat from uh, the main scheme and Beta Ray Bill can be committed as a physical resource. So, uh, you want to uh, defeat uh, minions that this guy hits, so that you can uh, access the extra threat remover. So, this looks like a really decent ally. The 5 cost maybe is a bit high, but uh, again, Star Lord can manage that. Next, we have Yondu. Uh, Yondu is a 4 cost ally with 2 port and 1 attack. And the attack has an asterisk, so uh, asterisk reads Yondu's attack gains ranged, range attacks ignore retaliate, and Yondu has only two health. But you should notice that Yondu's attack doesn't cause uh, consequential damage, so you can keep on hitting with Yondu as long as you want, and uh, he won't uh, get defeated by damage. That way, and also Yondu can be committed as a energy resource. So I'm really interested in seeing Yondu in action. Basically the same as uh, Spider Man's ally, cat, uh, Black Cat, but Guardian. And then we have uh, Air Super Air Supremacy. Uh, it's two cost event, aerial tactic, traded hero action, choose up to X enemies, where X is equal to the number of aerial characters you control. Uh, deal uh, three damage to each chosen enemy, and aerial super supremacy can be committed as a physical resource. So, uh, we have seen that many of the allies in uh, Star Lord's uh, deck, or the pre-built deck, have the aerial traits, also Star-Lord gains the aerial trait with his boots, so this seems like a really powerful card, and there are of course three copies of it. Next we have uh, Blaze of Glory. Blaze of Glory has uh, is a two cost event, max one per round, hero action, each guardian character gets plus one, two thwart and plus two attack this phase. At the end of the phase, deal 1 damage to each Guardian character, and it can be committed as a uh, physical resource. So, Blaze of Glory is a really, really strong card. Uh, you want to play this at the key moment, so even if you lose the allies you have, uh, you might win the scenario by the added, added uh, damage. Or if you're really in trouble with the threat, you can... Um, uh, level the <laughs> playing field with this card. Okay, and there are of course uh, three copies of this in the deck. Then we have a uh, first reprint, which is two copies of Get Ready. And next we have uh, Target Practice. Target Practice is a zero cost support skill interrupt. Uh, when an ally with the weapon upgrade makes an attack, this card target practice that ally gets plus two attack for that attack, and it can be committed as a mental resource. So, uh, ally with the weapon upgrade, so we don't have any weapon upgrades that can be played to allies, so oh, there's uh, three copies of this. Let's see if we get some. Uh, we have next a reprint of the power of leadership times two. Okay, so then we have Laser Blaster, there are three copies of this. So, Laser Blaster is a one cost upgrade, attached to a Guardian ally, max one per ally, attached ally gets plus one attack, and this at, and its attacks gain over kill. So, immediately we have some uh, upgrades that can be played on 
allies, but they have to be guardian allies. So that is interesting. So that really works well with the card we just saw, the target practice. Okay, really interesting. That is all of the leadership cards that come in this pack. So let's look at the basic cards next. Uh, we have a Cosmo, which is a two cost ally. Cosmo has one fort and one attack. Cosmo has the guardian trait and two hit points. Interrupt when Cosmo attacks or thwarts, name a card type, then discard the top card of a deck. So any deck. If that card is of the name type, Cosmo does not take consequential damage. The damage under thwart and or attack for this use. Okay, and Cosmo can be committed as a, as a mental resource. So, uh, again, this combos really well with uh, uh, Star Lord's Alter Ego, because you can place a card on top of your deck and then reveal that or discard it. So, you know what type of card that is, so Cosmo can combo off from that. And it's a cheap basic ally, so really, really useful. Next we have uh, CATT, which is a uh, two-cost support, it's a vehicle, hero action, exos, CITT, and spend two resources of any type, ready a guardian character, and CITT can be committed as a wild resource. So, uh, this seems really good, I think maybe in later uh, Guardian Heroes or where, where you might have like a Drax with really high hit uh, or attack value then you can ready and hit a second time. So this is a really combo card and I think I'm interested in using it. Uh, next we have a 2 cost support, Nowhere, it's a location. Play only if your identity has the Guardian trait. Increase your ally limit by one. Response after a player plays a Guardian ally exhaust nowhere. That player draws one card. And it can be committed as an uh, energy resource. So, uh, if you're playing through solo and you want all of the Guardians to play at the same time, you have to play nowhere so you can up your ally limit to four. So you can have. Oh yeah, and then you need to try scaling so that you can can have five allies in play. Okay, uh, a decent card. Then uh, we have more uh, weapons. So we have uh, three copies of Pulse Grenade. Pulse Grenade is a two cost upgrade. It's a weapon, hero action, attack. Discard Pulse Grenade and choose an enemy. Discard the top cook two cards of the encounter deck, deal one damage to the chosen enemy, enemy for each boost icon discarded this way, and it can be committed as an energy resource, so... Uh, actually, this could be really, <laughs> really interesting in uh, Scarlet Witch, because you can just boost those cards up with Scarlet uh, Witch's abilities, or if you hit the zero, uh, boost icons you can try again and stuff like that so I think this might be more interesting out of uh, uh, Star Lord's deck but we'll see so that was the whole Star Lord deck so pretty interesting to play Star Lord um, I'm a bit hesitant on the high risk high reward playstyle on true solo it might uh, just defeat you in the worst case and nobody can uh, help you out if you get into a pickle with the going going too far with the encounter card. But we'll see how that works when I get to play um, Star Lord for the first time. So next uh, let's look at the rest of the new um, player cards. So the first card that we have for aggression is uh, Dive Bomb. Dive Bomb is a 4 cost event, it's an aerial attack, play only if your identity has the aerial trait, hero action, attack, deal 7 damage to an enemy, deal 1 damage to each other enemy, and it can be committed as a physical resource. So, 
a really strong attack event. Really looking forward to using that in an aggression deck sometime. Next we have uh, Agile Flight. It's a 3 cost event, Aerial Thwart. Play only if your identity has the Aerial Trait. Your Action Thwart. Remove total of up to 5 threat from among schemes as you choose and it can be committed as a mental resource. Okay, so I think all of these uh, other aspect cards are if you have the Aerial Trait. As you can see. Uh, next we have Ever Vigilant, it's a 2 cost event, aerial skill. Play only if your identity has the aerial trait. Hero action, ready your hero, and remove 2 threat from the main scheme. Okay, so basically can defend, then next turn ready with discard and remove some threat if you have aerial. So, and it can be committed as a mental resource. So, I'm actually really liking this, uh, that we get some support for Aerial, finally. And the last card is a reprint of the Enhanced Awareness, which I won't do into that much. Uh, the last cards we are looking at is, uh, are uh, the Obligation and the Nemesis cards. So the Obligation is Banishment. Uh, it's an Obligation, give to the Peter Quill player. You may flip to Alter Ego form, choose, it's of Peter Quill. Remove banishment from the game or discard an element gun from play if you cannot place three threat from the main scheme. Discard this creation has two boost items. So, um, the other is a standard exhaust alter ego side and remove from the game, and the other uh, removes an element gun or adds threat, whichever is possible. So, Okay, basic uh, application style, nothing really fancy. Uh, then we have the um, MSI side scheme. It, uh, it's a parting crime syndicate. Uh, hinder two, when we will place two threat per player here. It has an additional counter card symbol and three um, boost icons comes into play with two threats. So if you're playing through solo it comes into play with four, etc. Okay, well nothing really fancy in this. Then we have the Nemesis Minion, which is Mr. Knife. Mr. Knife has two scheme and two attack and six hit points. That's that's a lot. Uh, it's uh, Mr. Knife has the criminal and elite traits and retaliate one. The first threat trait in Gates player reveals its villain face gains search. Okay, so and Mr. Knife Knife has two uh, boost icons. So really bad when you're stalwart and have a ton of um, extra encounter cards in front of you. This makes it even more worse. Uh, you are getting the search even if you don't have any any in front of you, but with the search, if you have any more, it, it means you, you're getting even more uh, encounter cards that way, so pre pretty annoying and hard uh, to get rid of a uh, minion. Then we have three copies of uh, Spartoil Cunning. Uh, Spartoil Cunning is a treachery. When revealed, discard one card at random from your hand, take one damage and place one threat on the main scheme, and it has one boost icon. So, you lose a card, take one damage and get one threat, so pretty annoying uh, treachery. Okay, well, uh, that was uh, Star Lord's Hero Pack, all the cards uh, in that. So I'm uh, really interested in the playstyle of Star Lord. I haven't um, watched any playthroughs, and uh, if you noticed, uh, we got Gamora first here in Finland. So I'm doing this a bit backwardsy. So first we had Gamora, and now we have Star Lord. So uh, I haven't seen any playthroughs of Star Lord, so I have to play uh, a game with Star Lord. Once I have sleeved up all of these cards and see how the deck fun 
functions, but I'm uh, super excited on the new and interesting play style of Star Lord. It's pretty different from anything that we've seen before, and I think uh, leadership aspect is quite interesting and working well with Star Lord's abilities. So a lot of allies and boosting those allies. So hope you guys like this. Uh, hero pack focus on Star Lord. As always, thanks for watching and until next time.